God. We're to live it. I like how he says that at the end. We are an agitating force. The people, when you're around them, get kind of irritated because you're always praising the Lord in front of them or you're always reminding them about their sin. Or are they comfortable with you because you don't say anything? You're not an agitating force. You're not a pricking conscience. You're not a sword of opposition. You're not even a, a stinging salt solution a conviction. You know, it used to be, and it still is a little bit, but when I would be around certain people in the world that knew that I was a preacher, let alone a Christian, but it was usually the preacher aspect, and they would always, you know, when they would use some filthy language or something, that they would, you know, pardon my French, uh, pastor, or more like rev, reverend, what's the word that they would use. I hate that word. But they would, they would do that. And I, in fact, I thought a long time ago, this one man, he was a real nice guy, real nice guy. And uh, I even believe he was a believer as well from our conversations. But he used to always call me Rev. I don't even know if he remembered my name. Thank you, Rev. Hi, Rev. How you doing, Rev? What, am I an uh, umpire in some game? You know, Rev? <laughs> Blowing my whistle? Tooting my horn? Coming along with a cattle prod? trying to hit the people in the southern hemisphere to get them up, to get them moving, to get them motivated, to get them going. And a lot of times that's what the pastor has turned into, just this motivational speaker. Motivate me! I'm coming today! Motivate me! Scream at me! <laughs> and some other times it's not even that. It's don't scream at me. Don't wake me up. I lost an hour of sleep last night. Hey, I did what I said I was going to do. I started you know, day before, turned my clock back, and I had to keep reminding myself I did that, you know. <laughs> it messed me up, but I did do it. And I was really relying on my phone this morning because I was using the alarm for T-Mobile to make the adjustment of daylight savings time, okay? And it did, but see, I had to wait till 2 o'clock to find out if it did. <laughs> and I happened to wake up, and I looked over at it, and it, it, it did change, I think. And... Uh, you know, when one of the boys woke up and I walked into the room, I came back comparing clocks, you know, like this. Think about this. What are we? Who are we as the church? What is our responsibility? Are you part of the true church? I'm not saying that we identify the true, tr the true church just by its function. Because any church can do these things and not be the true church. But most importantly, have you been called out? Have you been called out of sin? Called out of Satan? Called out of the world? Have you been called unto Jesus Christ? Called into the fellowship of His Son? And if you have, you're not the same person as you used to be. You're now a different person. And after a while, you know, of the, of the people that you hang out with that don't know Jesus Christ, after a while, uh, what will either happen is, is that you will compromise and conform to the world and no longer be this agitating force or this pricking conscience or this sort of opposition, or you will be the sort of opposition and the people will not want to hang out with you. You'll find yourself with less friends. The question is, which is it? We want so much to be accepted. That's just in human nature, to be accepted. We don't like to be rejected. That's really the main reason why we don't share our faith faithfully. is because we don't want to be rejected. We don't want people closing doors in our face. We don't want people alienating us. We don't want people talking about us behind our backs. We don't want people making fun of us. All I can say is, is what Paul says, that the sufferings in this life do not compare to the glory that will be revealed in heaven. And I would rather people know for a fact that I am a changed person, that I am a child of God, that I am a follower of Jesus Christ, and reject me on those bases instead of questioning whether I am and try to pull me in and to get me to conform to their type of living. 
Listen, I had that type of living already. And it has a lot of enticement. It has a lot of pull of the flesh because it's all fleshly. It's all geared to that because it's run by Satan. Its appeals are to our baser fallen drives, our fallen nature. That's how come when you watch TV, you see a commercial that's enticing, whether it entices a man to a woman or a woman to a man, you know, that those desires get excited. It's because of our fallenness. It's like I said Wednesday night, we still have this flesh that we have to deal with. And it certainly does not help us if we're cooperating with the flesh, right? Listen to this passage over in Romans 13, verses 13 and 14. It says, let us behave properly as in the day, not in carousing and drunkenness, not in sexual promiscuity and sensuality, not in strife and jealousy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh in regard to its lust. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't give in to the flesh. It has nothing good to offer. Live the life of Christ. Experience the kind of living that He provides. You know, it's, it might not be one rosy life that you just make this one glorious march off into heaven because it is a, a highway also paved with thorns. Thorns of opposition, thorns of persecution, thorns of suffering, thorns of discouragement. But remember this, Jesus said, John sixteen thirty three: In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And listen, because he lives, you and I live. Because he overcome, you and I can overcome. Because we have him in us. We have his spirit in us. And so I want to encourage you today, live who you are, the church of Jesus Christ. Let's pray. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for this time of being in your word. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you would just constantly remind us of these truths as we go throughout the day, Father, that we are the called of Jesus Christ, that we've been called into the fellowship of the Son, called as saints, called out from the world of Satan and of sin, that we are the body of Jesus Christ, and we have been given gifts by which we can function in the body, and we've also been given the ability by your Spirit, to make disciples. I pray, Father, that we'll be faithful and obey that. I pray as we leave here today that we'll realize as we drive off this, pro this parking lot that we are, we are in the mission field. We're in the mission field every time we're in the world. That we'll constantly think about those around us that need the Savior, that need to hear the good news. And Lord, that we'll be quick to share that with them. We thank you for these truths today. And we pray just to glorify and honor you throughout this day, Father. We thank you again. In your name we pray. Amen.